Okay, let's see how you did on these. So the first one, we're just taking the words and we're trying to translate it into numbers and symbols. So five times the difference of a number in seven. Anybody want to throw out an answer for that one? Okay, well, difference means it's going to be n or x or whatever minus 7. But can I just do this? No, when it says 5 times the difference, that means the subtraction's already done. The difference is the result of the, tra the subtraction. So how do I make sure I'm multiplying the result of the, the subtraction and not just the variable? Perfect. Parentheses. I put in those parentheses so I know that I'm subtracting first. n minus 7 is happening first. Then I'm multiplying by the 5. Anybody have any questions on that one? So as I had said before, be patient with yourself because that is one of the toughest concepts in math is translating from words into math formulas and math sentences. Next, to perform the indicated operation, here we see parentheses. Whenever we see parentheses, our first thing, should it should always draw our attention there, and we should ask two questions. The first one is, is there anything that needs to be done inside those parentheses? In this case, can I do anything in there? No. Second question then should always be, is there anything that needs to be done to the parentheses? And here there is, it is multiply by 7. So we're going to multiply what's in the parentheses by 7. So what we're going to do is distribute is the process or the shortcut. 7 times 3y is 21y. And then 7 times a negative 8, negative 56. Any questions on that one? Okay, over here then, this is just simply multiplication. 4x squared times 7x to the 4th. So remember, we combine the numbers. What's 4 times 7? 28. And then we combine the names or combine the variables. x squared times x to the 4th is x to the 6th. Very good. Any questions on that one? And then finally down here, we have evaluate. So I'm giving you the expression 5x minus 3y squared. And evaluate it for x equals 9 and y equals 3. What are we going to do first? We have to replace the x with 9, right? So that's 5x becomes 5 times 9 minus 3. Perfect. Well, 3 times 3 squared, right? We replace the y with 3. So 3 times y squared becomes 3 times 3 squared. And now order of operations tells us we have to do the exponent first. There's no enclosing symbols, so we do the exponent first. So 5 times 9 doesn't change, minus 3 doesn't change, times what's 3 squared? 9. 3 times 3 is 9. Now, no more exponents. So we're on to multiplication and division. There's two multiplications, so we go left to right. 5 times 9 is 45. Then we can do the 3 times 9, which is 27. And we subtract. 45 minus 27 is 18. Any questions on that one? One more that I want you to try. Try to combine what you can in that. Simplify that expression. So what can we combine? 
18 m and not 6 but negative 6 perfect so 18 and negative 6 or 18 minus 6 if you prefer to think of it that way is 12 then, of course, a negative 11p and negative 3p make negative 14p. So that negative 11 and negative 3 both go the same direction. Those negatives are going to give us trouble for a while. Um, this seems to have been the week for technical difficulties for me. Um, my system crashed as I was trying to process my videos Tuesday, so you may have noticed the recordings weren't out there. Um, so I did get some old recordings put out there early this morning, so I apologize for that. Also, this one was probably my fault. I uh, had the time zone setting in my math lab set to Eastern rather than Central. So if any of you tried to push the quiz to the last minute Tuesday night, it told you you were done at 10.59 instead of 11.59. I did change the time zone and I did extend the quiz so everybody has until the end of the day Saturday if you didn't get it done. If you did get it done, I did add an attempt for everybody, so if you still want to try it one more time, you can do that. So it is sitting out there for those of you who didn't get to it or for those of you that want to try it one more time. Well, I didn't think it was due until today, so I was like, well, I'll go back to do it. But I was like, oh, sure. What? Yep, the quizzes are always due well, the I'll day they were signed. So like there's a homework assignment from Tuesday is due today at noon. And I did but, that first. Yeah. So then I was like, oh, I'll do the quiz later. Yeah, so the new quiz will be due tonight at 11.59 p.m. And that new quiz will be the same material that was on that homework that was due at noon today. So it would make sense to do the quiz first anyway because it's linked to that homework before you start the new stuff. Before you load up your brain with the new material. Quiz two will be due tonight at 11.59 p.m. And I did double check to make sure the time zone is right on that one. Okay. So last class we did a lot of work with variables. And I want to take some time in our first hour today and review that. Just as we did here with these first few problems. Because it is one of the more difficult tasks that we deal with. So if we have something like like this. Now again, when you look at these, the parentheses usually tell us to do something first. But you look at each of these set of parentheses and there's nothing to do inside of them and there's really nothing to do to either one of them either. Those parentheses are just there to separate one part of the problem from the other. Just like if we had a problem like this. We put parentheses around that negative 3 just to show that that is a number in itself. That, number, that negative is not an operation. It is part of the 3, a negative 3. So what we really have down here is just two two-digit numbers being subtracted. So this is 8x minus 7. And from that, we are subtracting 3x minus 5. Now you have to remember, as we subtract down the columns, that we do have to deal with the negatives. This is negative 7 minus a negative 5. So whenever we're dealing with subtraction, I, I generally write the numbers off to the side so that I make sure I'm dealing with it correctly. So negative 7 minus a negative 5. When we're dealing with negatives and we have to subtract, I always change it to addition. Does the negative 7 change? No. It's the number that the subtraction is operating on that changes. We are subtracting the negative 5. So I'm going to change it to adding. And then the opposite of the negative 5 would be positive 5. <clears throat> so that becomes negative 7 plus 5. So if I look at my, my vectors or my number line, negative 7 looks like that. Positive 7 goes the opposite direction. 
and it is shorter. So, or sorry, positive 5 goes the opposite direction. It is shorter, so it'll go like that. So we are left on the negative side. We know this will be negative. And it's their opposite direction, so it's the difference between their absolute values. So the difference between 7 and 5 is 2. It's a negative 2. <clears throat> you look confused. Okay. Then we have 8 minus 3, which is 5, and of course that's x. Yeah? Um, good question. Let me show you here. If you're doing problems in my math lab, you can find the correlation really quickly. <clears throat> so something I should have pointed out before. Oh, don't. Yeah, don't worry about that. That'll I'll change that when I switch it over. Put the grades in Blackboard. Okay, so if I'm doing a homework assignment, <clears throat> let's say I'm working on one of my questions. You can see right here in the corner, it says 1.1.39. That is telling us what chapter and section and problem number in the book that this is similar to. So if you're open to open your book to chapter one, section one, in other words, section 1.1 in the textbook, and look at the problems at the end of that section, this problem is very similar to problem number 39. Let's click on another problem. This is 1.4.67. So that's chapter 1, section 4. So section 1.4. And at the end of that section, it'd be very similar to problem number 67. So if you ever wanted to look in the book and find that a similar problem, or just that's telling you it's section 1.4 out of the book. So as you're doing any of the homework problems, you can find that in the book. So this one's section 1 1.6. And if you looked at the end, it'd be similar to question 71 at the end of section 1.6. Uh, you bet. Now, since we had to stop for that anyway, I want to bring up, I was meant to mention at the beginning of class, near Richmond, I believe it's the 23rd coming up, we have a scheduled communication outage or their whole network's going to be down and their power is going to be out for a little while because of the construction and I believe that is a that would be next week Thursday so we do have class that day um, there will not they will not be able to bring up the ITV network for you in New Richmond so your options are you can come to Rice Lake or you can view the recorded postings online later I mean I I uh, complained furiously about that that they can't cut my network and everything in the middle of my classes but their construction has to move on over there so that's something we're gonna have to work around so for you in Richmond next week Thursday you can come into the classroom but the network most likely will not be able to bring the network up in fact the classroom may even be dark so. Okay, so here's one I want you to try. See if you can remember how I showed you to do that. And this one is pretty tricky, so don't get frustrated. So when we go to set this one up, we have the 7x squared. And you'll notice there is no x in that one, but there is in this second one. So I'm going to put in plus 0x here, and then minus 8. 
I have to put this in here to fill that place value. Just like if I had a number like uh, 800 and four ones, written out in long form like this, 800s and four ones, I don't have to put in the tens if that's a zero, do I? But when I write it in abbreviated form, I have to put that zero in the tens place to hold that place value. Does that make sense? So I have to do the same down here. Remember, all algebraic numbers are really written out in that long or expanded form. I don't need to write the x in there because it's a 0x. But if I'm going to do any operations with it, I have to put it in there so that I can combine it with other x's. So I have something to line up. So now I'm going to be subtracting. The 9x has to go under the 0x, and the positive 5 goes under the negative 8. So now I am subtracting here. This is a negative 8 minus 5. I'm going to change that to a negative 8 plus a negative 5, adding the opposite. The opposite of positive 5 is negative 5. So negative 8, negative 5 makes negative 13. Here I have 0 minus 9 would be negative 9x. And 7x squared minus nothing is just 7x squared. How many of you had that one right? Okay, not a very good average so far this morning. Well, we'll keep trying. I still don't get why we're adding the zero. Okay. I gotta put that zero in there because Yeah, well there's there's an x squared here, which is fine, but on this one the nine x would have nothing to combine with. Yeah. So I mean sometimes it is okay to just start writing this out as you know seven x squared minus eight. But then when you go to write the next one, the nine x, where do I put it? So then you've got a so I've got to put in a 0x here so that I have something to line up the 9x with. And it's just basically like with whole numbers, we have to line up the place values in the columns. We have to do the same with algebraic numbers. So if there isn't something in that place value, we have to put something in. Let's try one a little bit different. Oops, go ahead. What's that? Negative 9. Oh, because it's 0 minus 9. So 0 minus 9. So that's 0 plus a negative 9. So you're at 0 and you got to go negative 9. Okay, thank you. You bet. <laughs> yep. Um, remember, the way the book does some of these, I'll write, rewrite it down here. The way the book does these is it says to rewrite it, removing the parentheses, but then everything that comes after, if I'm subtracting a parentheses, everything, the, I'm going to change that to addition, but everything in the parentheses has to change its sign. So this is going to become a negative 9x, and this is going to become a negative 5. And now you combine the like terms. Well, there's nothing to combine with 7x squared. You just got the negative 9x, then you've got negative 8 and negative 5 make it the negative 13. For some people, that's easier to do if you can remember that this subtraction means you have to change the sign of every digit in the parentheses. It's a shortcut, and again, I'm, I'm not big on shortcuts, but at the same time, if that works for you, if that's what works for you, feel free to use it. You'll notice it's basically doing what we did. We, we did change these signs when we went to subtract. You know, I did change that to a negative 5 so that I could combine it. And I did change this to a negative 9 so I could combine it. It's just 
taking out some of the steps in between. You bet. Oops, I don't want the x squared in there, sorry. Let me get that out of here. Give this one a shot and see what you come up with. Okay, so for this one, let's see how you're doing so far. We see the parentheses, so again, we have to ask for each one. We'll go left to right here. Is there anything we need to do inside that set of parentheses? And of course, there's not. Is there anything we need to do to that set of parentheses? Yes, times the 7. So 7 times 3x is 21x. And then 7 times negative 4 is negative 28. What's next? Negative 3. You've got to remember this is a negative 3 and not just a 3. Times 5x, good, which is? Negative 15x. Negative times a positive is a negative. Okay. Then negative 3 times 2 is? Negative 6. There you go. Are we done? No, we're not. What do we still have to do? Twenty-one x and the negative fifteen x make positive six x. Good. And then perfect. Negative twenty-eight and negative six make negative thirty-four. You had the right idea. Perfect. How are we doing so far? No answer. Is it good or bad? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, and you don't, won't necessarily always get down to two, but yeah, you keep combining as long as you can combine. Because we will run into some that are like this. Why don't you give that one a shot? Let's see how it goes. Where do we start? Not, not everybody wants. What's that? Five x times three x to the third. My three looks kind of funny there, sorry. Which is perfect. Fifteen x to the fourth. Then it is 5x times negative 7, which is negative 35x. Perfect. What's next? It's positive 2 times, careful, it's a positive 4x. So uh, two, positive 2 times 4 is positive 8x. And then 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Good. Are we done? No, we still have some things out there that have the same name. They have the same variable with the same power. Anything combined with the 15x to the 4th? No. Anything combined with the negative 35x? 
Positive 8x. Good. We got negative 35 and positive 8. What's that give us? Negative 27. And x. When we add or subtract, we keep the same name. And then, of course, there's just the negative 6 sitting out there by itself. Let's try something that looks like this. 7 times a number decreased by 3, pretend that looks like a 3, is 25. Now this is actually a little bit different than what we looked at yesterday. I added a step to it. When you see the is here, that's implying equivalence or equals. So something here equals 25. Is 25 is, a, is implying that part of our symbols here. So now we got to look at what's going on in front of the is. 7 times a number decreased by 3. What's that going to be? Yeah, 7x minus 3. Very good. Or 7x and negative 3. 7 times x minus 3. So it's very similar to what we did yesterday. Now we just have that equals and another number on it. Eight less than three times a number is, let's stick with 25. I want you to try that one in your notes quick. So what do you get? Perfect. 3x minus 8 equals 25. It's a little tricky because our brain wants to put something, if it comes first, we want to put it first. Here, 8 less than comes first. But that's not first in our sentence. We're subtracting, that's saying we're subtracting 8 from something. And you always have to subtract after the number is there. Let's do something a little bit trickier. The sum of two consecutive numbers is 41. Give that one a shot.
So, I can see the wheels turning. How do we express two different numbers? Well, if I let the small, two consecutive numbers means like, you know, 7 and 8 or 14 and 15. How do I express those in symbols? Well, if the smaller one is x, what's the second one going to be? x plus 1. One more than that. That has to add up to 41. I know that one wasn't really fair. Let's say the length of a rectangle is four more than the width. The perimeter is 128. Now, we haven't mentioned much about perimeter yet. There was a problem in the homework that came up about it. The perimeter is the distance around something. And it's usually found by just adding up the sides. Now in a rectangle, the sides come in pairs. The longer side is usually considered the length. And the opposite sides are same, so we have two lengths. And the shorter side is usually called the width. And again, opposite sides are the same, so we have two widths. If I just write that as L and W, the perimeter of a rectangle is L plus W plus L plus W. Now, we've done a little bit of algebra so far. We can reduce that, simplify that to just saying, hey, L plus L is, careful, you're thinking L times L. L plus L, think of this as 1L plus 1L is 2L. So W plus W is 2W. So you can think of a perimeter as being 2L plus 2W. 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. So now back to the problem at hand. The length is 4 more than the width. So I, I don't want to use two different variables here. But what I can do is this. The length is equal to the width plus 4. There's 4 more than the width. So now I can replace L with W plus 4. Now I'm going to pause there. Any questions on where that W plus 4 came from? What's that? Yeah, because the length is 4 more than the width. So it's the width plus 4. And all we did was we replaced the L here with W plus 4. Just like if I had said L equals 7, you'd replace the L with 7. We can replace it with another variable, another expression. Now we could leave it like this. That would be okay. But if we're going to use it for anything, it would be much nicer and simpler if we combined what we could. So what can we do with this? Well, we have parentheses. Is there anything we can do inside those parentheses? No. But we can do something to them. We can multiply by 2. 2 times W is 2W. 2 times 4 is... 8, so plus 8. Is that it? Don't forget the other positive 2w out here. Now looking at that, is there anything else we can still combine? 2w and 2w. 2w and 2w make 4w 
Plow save. There's a lot to that one, isn't it? Any questions? I wonder if you guys try one similar to that. So the length of a rectangle is seven more than the width The perimeter is 114. Write an expression for that perimeter. Do we have it or do we need a minute yet? Whenever we're talking about something visual, I like to draw a picture. So I'm going to draw the rectangle. And I'll label this is the length and this is the width. What do we know about the length and the width? Length is 7 more than the width. So the length equals 7 plus w or w plus 7. It's always easier for me to put the variable first. It's just the way I've always seen it, so my mind works better that way. So then we're, we know the perimeter is equal to 2L plus 2W. What are we going to do with that? P doesn't change. 2L or 2 times L becomes, we replace the L with W plus 7. And then plus 2w here. Then what would we do? <coughs> Perfect. 2 times w is 2w. 2 times 7, 14, so plus 14. Then we still have the other positive 2w. And then. Perfect. We combine the 2w and 2w to make 4w plus 14, or 14 plus 4w. Either one is fine. Well, it, it's part of the, comes from the plus 7 times 2. What it's saying is if the length is 7 more than the width, you can take it as four of the widths plus that seven twice because there's a seven here and there's going to be a plus seven down here because there's two lengths. So that's where the 14 really comes from is the plus seven. Did I put a one in there? Oh, oh um, that actually would be the next step. You could put in P to replace that with 114. And now you could figure out what W is. Yeah. I just put that in there because it's going to be the next step, and after break, it might be something we look at. Yeah. Let's do something similar to this, and I want to see how you guys do on your own. We will talk about it in a minute. But let's say I tell you that the, the length of a rectangle is three times the width the perimeter is 96 write an expression for the length and the width Draw the rectangle. Once again, we have the length and the width. Which one gets expressed in terms of the other here? Still the length. So this time the length equals not the width plus a number, but three times the width. So we'll just write 3w. 
So the perimeter is 2L plus 2W. What's going to get replaced over here? Still the L, right? What are we going to replace it with? Yeah, so 2 times 3W, or W times 3. And of course, the plus 2W is still there. What will we do next? <coughs> well, 2 times 3W is 6W. And then 6W plus 2W is 8W. P equals 8W. Now the next step to this would be to take that age, that value, or not age, that perimeter, that value of 96, and put it in there. If the perimeter is 96, I can replace P with 96. Now I'm one step closer to figuring out the length and width. A similar type of problem to these deals with age. P is three years older than Sam. Pat is two years younger than Sam. The sum of their ages is 49. Well, an expression here, sum means we're just going to add up their ages, right? So Pete plus Sam plus, oops, put PE and PA for Pete and Pat, has to add up to 49. But I don't want to have three variables there, do I? So let's look at this. We've got Pete, Sam, and Pat. We have to find a relationship between them. Now I wrote this problem specifically so that two of the ages both refer to the same one. Which one is it that the other two refer to? Pete is two years older than Sam. Pat is two years younger than Sam. They both refer to Sam. So Sam is the one that we want to hold as our variable. So Sam's age is just going to be S. Pete is three years older than Sam. How are we going to express that? S plus three. Good. Pat is two years younger than Sam. S minus two. So up here, this is going to become Pete is S plus 3, Sam is just S, and Pat is S minus 2 equals 49. Are we done? No. S, S, and S make 3S. 3 and negative 2 make 1. Now, one of the things we're going to do after our break is we are going to start looking at word problems and picking out information like this. So that's why I put up these last few examples where we have to try to pick information out of a problem to write an expression. Um, we're also going to look at solving equations. But for right now, we're going to go ahead and take our break. It's 10.02, so we'll start up again at 10.12.